What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue and I hope you're all doing well today. With a new season of Mythic Plus comes a new affix, and for patch 9.1, we'll be contending with the Jailer's forces throughout the Shadowlands via the Tormented affix. This has replaced Prideful as the Keystone level 10 and higher threat that we'll have to deal with, so I figured I'd do a little guide on how it works and how to handle it. The Tormented affix will cause four new Moss Sworn related enemies to appear in specific locations of each Shadowlands dungeon on Keystones level 10 and higher. Each ad will have its own slew of mechanics, which we'll be going over first so you know how to counter them. Defeating these Mossworn enemies will spawn a giant Anima Sphere that you'll need to interact with. Doing so will spawn a smaller Anima Cell, similar to the ones that you see in Torghast. Clicking on this will give you access to one of three Anima Powers, and the powers they offer are consistent based on which enemy you kill, meaning there is no RNG to what powers will be available from each enemy. However, the order these enemies show up in is specific to each dungeon, so you may end up with a certain power really early in Halls of Atonement, or in Theater of Pain it might be one you get near the end. Due to that, I'd highly recommend checking out a class-specific guide for anima power choices, as I can only really elaborate on how they're currently performing for rogues. Another important thing to remember is that each of these adds will have a unique debuff they apply to the group, and if you go to engage the final boss of the dungeon with any of these adds still alive, the debuff that they have is applied to everyone during the final boss fight. This can be exceptionally dangerous depending on which debuff is active and which boss you're facing. So as of now, for most normal like Keystone Master type achievement things, I would recommend just killing all four of these enemies for the buffs that you'll receive. First, we have Executioner Varuth. This enemy applies a debuff to the group, reducing all healing received by 50% while he's alive. His main mechanic is Wave of Terror, which is an AoE fear effect that hits the entire group for shadow damage and fears you all for 6 seconds and you'll run all over the place and probably end up pulling everything and dying. But to negate this fear, you'll just want to stand within 6 yards of any member of your party. This means ideally your group will just dogpile onto your tank and you'll be fine. As soon as Wave of Terror ends though, you'll want to spread out for Carnage. This puts a red circle around one player and after a couple seconds, Varuth will charge them, dealing a nasty bit of damage and putting a bleed on anyone within 5 yards of that player, and that player included. Meanwhile, the tank is going to get slapped with Sever over and over throughout all of this, which is just a single target attack with a bleed attached to it. Incinerator Arkaloth deals AoE fire damage every 3 seconds and seems to deal by far the most group-wide damage so any magic defensive you have here will be amazingly helpful for your survival, or just any self-healing you have, really. Melt Soul is a magic debuff that Arkaloth puts on nearby players, which doubles all fire damage they take, so any magic dispels you have will be invaluable for this. He will also target a random player with Scorching Blast, which puts a big fiery circle on a player that leaves a flame patch on the ground after a few seconds. This puddle stays on the ground until Arkalath is dead, so try to drop these away from the group if possible. Lastly, and possibly most importantly, is Inferno. Never let this cast go off, as it does a huge amount of fire damage to everyone, and if you have Melt Soul on you, it can be devastating. Make sure to call out your interrupts, as it's possible to miss this cast if you overlap even just a couple times. Since we've had a fire opponent, we obviously need an ice opponent too, and that is Oros Coldheart. His passive aura reduces everyone's movement speed by 50%, making it much harder to dodge his various attacks. It is best to stay relatively close to Oros as you avoid his moves, as it's easier to sidestep a lot of the attacks this way. Ideally though, I wouldn't stand directly on top of any of your teammates due to his biting cold ability. This puts a big circle on one person, and they will take heavy frost damage every second for 10 seconds. Any players in that circle will also take that frost damage every second, so just move away from others if you have it. This debuff hits really hard, so any magic damage mitigation or immunities or self-heals you have during this will be a huge help to the group. Frost Lance is a simple front beam attack thing that needs to be sidestepped as not only does it deal pretty hefty damage, but it knocks you back really far away if you get clipped by it, so don't. Lastly, Cold Snap is a bunch of blue puddles that explode on the ground after a little bit, kind of like the Comet Storm ability from Nalthor in Necrotic Wake. As is a reoccurring theme with Oros, this move hits really hard, so move out of them and avoid taking unnecessary damage. Lastly, we have Sagadon the Breaker. This is the most intimidating looking of the four Tormented adds, but he's actually pretty easy. He'll apply a debuff to the group, causing everyone to take 50% more physical damage. The tank is the primary one who will need to deal with this, as Sagadon auto-attacks of course, but also has the crush ability. 
This is a simple, single target hit which the tank will be getting whapped with every now and then and that's basically it. Sogodon also uses Seismic Wave, which is a moderate AoE physical damage hit to the whole group, but his big mechanic is Massive Smash, which he seems to always cast after a Seismic Wave. Sogodon will pull the entire group into him with chains, rooting everyone in place. You'll need to DPS the chains off of everyone in the group before the Massive Smash cast ends so you can get out of the big circle on the ground, as this will deal a metric ton of physical damage to anyone who stands in the blast radius. Outside of that, he's probably the easiest one to deal with of the four, and if you're a rogue, then you can vanish and it gets rid of your chains instantly, which is nice, or if you're using Killing Spree, that actually removes you from the root as well, which is pretty cool too. Alright, so now that you hopefully know how each of these enemies works, let's go over the DPS powers you can get for them, and which ones I'd suggest specifically for rogues. Tank and healer folks, and really other DPS for the most part, I apologize, but I also wouldn't want to just throw out a random recommendation for specs that I don't really play at all, so I really strongly recommend you take a peek at WoWhead's class-specific guides for the new Tormented affix and what powers they recommend you pick up. I'll leave a link to one of the main pages covering the Tormented Anima powers in a pinned comment if you want to take a peek. For consistency's sake, I'll be going over these in the same order as the fight mechanics section of this guide. So first we'll be doing Executioner Varuth. For our three choices, we have Champion's Brand, Dagger of Necrotic Wounding, and Volcanic Plumage. Champion's Brand is a flat stat increase, giving you either crit or mastery as long as you're above 70% health. Currently, this gives 210 of either stat, just in case the values change or there's tuning done after this video is made. This is a pretty simple stat increase, which results in both a single target and multi-target performance gain, which is always good. Just be sure to minimize the damage you take so you stay above 70% health as often as possible, otherwise this effect does literally nothing for you. It's not a bad power by any means, but it's nothing too crazy either, and it's nice, simple, jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none sort of deal. Dagger of Necrotic Wounding, on the other hand, is a very solid damage increase for single-target performance specifically. This applies a stacking debuff to your target, dealing ticking damage over 8 seconds. Not only does this deal more damage per stack, but it also reduces the healing and absorption effectiveness on the target by 2% per stack, going up to 20% at 10 stacks. This power is really impressive on boss fights, or really anything that lives long enough to stay at 10 stacks for an extended period of time. So, I'd recommend this for really any tyrannical weeks, or if you just want to kill priority targets more easily. I've had the Necrotic Wounding Dagger be up to 15% of my overall damage on a boss fight, so yeah, it is pretty impressive in single target. Lastly is Volcanic Plumage. This power will cause a fiery puddle to appear on the ground under targets you're attacking, and after a couple seconds, a flaming phoenix will shoot up, knocking any enemies within 3 yards of it up into the air. The damage output of Volcanic Plumage isn't as high as Dagger of Necrotic Wounding on single target, not even close. However, the knockup effect is amazingly potent for large trash pulls, as it will stop virtually any casts from going off. Having 3 DPS running this power can make most trash pulls laughably easy, though at the expense of some damage gains from the Necrotic Wounding Dagger for rogues. I would maybe suggest this power on Fortified Weeks or for dungeons with really big trash pulls you plan to make, though I have a feeling this power will really suck on Sanguine Weeks, as we haven't had a Sanguine Week come up yet this season, and I bet this will make enemies heal way too much from them not being able to run out of the puddles. Maybe not, we'll see. Really though, as long as at least two of the DPS are taking this power, the amount of knockups and free interrupts that you should get from it are more than sufficient, and it does pretty good damage in AoE, but keep this power in mind as you might find it useful. For Incinerator Arkaloth, we have another Champion's Brand, the Raging Battle Axe, and the Signet of Bolstering. As I've already covered the Champion's Brand just a moment ago, just remember to stay above 70% health as much as you can if you choose to run it. It's a nice simple stat buff, which is never a bad thing, but not quite as impressive as the other two options can potentially be. Raging Battle Axe is basically free execute damage on anything below 30% health. It does quite a respectable amount of damage, and is something I'd really recommend on Tyrannical Weeks over the other options. It does work perfectly fine on Trash, especially with Fortified if you have a really high health enemy to kill, and the Moss Sworn adds too, but you'll notice most of its damage output comes from long boss fights. Signet of Bolstering is a weird one, and I really want to like it, but it has a couple issues I've noticed. Okay, so basically you get a 3% damage buff whenever something dies within 40 yards of you if you're running the Signet of Bolstering. The buff lasts for 25 seconds, and you can get 5 stacks of it, meaning a 15% damage buff. 
The stacks don't refresh the duration though, so if something dies really early in a trash pull, then you can get kinda screwed out of a long duration damage boost. Currently, and I'm sure this will get nerfed or hotfixed or whatever you want to call it, you can right click off the signet of bolstering buff. So if the buff is about to fall off and you're in the middle of killing a bunch of dudes in a pull, you can do that to make sure that you don't waste the new stacks that'll be coming in. Don't expect this to work for too long though, as Blizzard has a habit of not allowing you to cheese buffs and things like that, especially when you're not supposed to be able to refresh it yourself. It also, at least as of the time I've been trying this this first week of Mythic Plus, doesn't seem to count any of the adds in boss fights towards the Signet of Bolstering, which really sucks and I'm hoping is just a bug as I've already reported it. If it is supposed to work with boss adds, then I can see this power being amazing on Echelon and Halls of Atonement, and really just most of Plaguefall in general as every boss fight has at least some adds that you can kill to amp up your boss damage a bit. This power has a lot of potential, but there are a few hiccups with it if you want to give it a shot. Oros Coldheart has mainly defensive and healing traits, though there is one that is a DPS gain for those of us with a trigger finger on our kick ability. Handbook of Uncivil Etiquette applies a 10% damage taken debuff to any target you interrupt successfully with a kick. So depending on the dungeon and how early you can get this power, it can add up very nicely to some free overall damage increases. Several bosses have interruptible moves too, which means this can even help with some boss damage as well as trash damage. However, if you get sniped by someone who also picked this power and beat you to it, you don't get any damage for it and your kick's on cooldown now. With interrupting now being a damage gain for anyone who picks this, do not be surprised if this happens a lot in uncoordinated groups or just people who are being greedy. For defensive purposes, Regenerative Fungus is a small bit of free healing whenever you take damage, and free healing is never a bad thing, though I've yet to be super impressed with the overall amount that it's done. For higher keys though, I imagine Vial of Desperation to be a pretty solid choice. You have to take at least 25% of your total health and damage for it to proc, but when it does, you get a 50% movement speed increase, as well as a 50% reduced damage taken for 3 seconds buff, which can be a literal lifesaver in some situations. The extra damage from Uncivil Etiquette is nice, but not dying is even nicer, so we'll see which one I find more appealing once we get back up into the 20s ranges in a couple weeks. Lastly, we have Sogadon the Breaker's powers. Honestly, this power list is almost a moot point, as I can't imagine taking anything other than the Stone Ward from his choices. Stone Ward gives you a 20% Absorb Shield every 45 seconds. Absorbs are amazing and useful, and amazingly useful, so I highly, highly recommend you get this one. Dripping Fang can give you between 5-20% to leech, based on how low your health is, so this is the second best option, but I still really couldn't imagine taking it over Stone Ward. Tiny Dancing Shoes just makes you avoid two ranged or melee attacks every time you enter combat. While technically this probably could result in more damage mitigated in some absurdly high keys or whatever, I just can't see this being a very practical choice, if ever. Well folks, I hope this overview of the new Tormented Affix as well as some of the power recommendations for my fellow rogues out there proves useful to you as we finally begin Season 2 of Mythic Plus for Shadowlands. Honestly, I find this affix far better than Prideful at this point, but we'll see how hard some of these enemies hit in higher keys and how useful their buffs are. If the video was helpful to you, please consider leaving a like, a comment, or maybe even subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet and want to see more videos on Rogue stuff, Mythic Plus stuff, and just WoW stuff in general. As always, my appreciation and gratitude to all of my viewers and especially my patrons, who all help make these Shiba shenanigans possible. Thank you all so much for watching. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.